performance websites, there are a lot of uh, words that are thrown around like performance, high availability, high scalability. These are not all the same, uh, but the purpose of this long running series, this 419 part series, is to touch on, on various things that you can do to make your site more responsive, to lower the load on your servers, distribute the load, make it more, more available so you have a highly available website or web service. And one of the pieces, or one of the ingredients, are CDNs. And we use CDNs on, on, most, of our, on most of our projects, but not all. Some don't need a CDN. And I wanted to see a show of hands, who here is using a CDN on one or more of your sites? I see three hands, four hands. All right. The question, I'm sorry. The question is, are you using a CDN on one or more of your sites? OK. Would one of you like to tell us what a CDN is? Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the definitions that I use is the content delivery network, or some people say content distribution network. And essentially, that's where we host anything static like a GIF, a JPEG, you know, something very simple, something not dynamic, uh, because they basically will spawn it on tons of servers, so it'll hit you much quicker than trying to pull my PHP page and the graphics from my same server. Exactly. So a content delivery network, or as Chris said, a content distribution network, is a place that, that holds and it stores your files for when they happen to be requested. And the reason for doing this is so that the, the load on your server is decreased. So if you have a 400 megabyte file that you want to serve up, for example, Apple does this with their trailers on apple.com slash trailers. They have huge files, but they don't actually live on Apple's <laughs> site. They don't live on apple.com. They don't live on Apple's servers at all. They live on a CDN. So although they pay a service to serve these things, and although they pay for the bandwidth associated with, with serving these large files, their servers are actually not being touched at all. What, what they're probably doing is they're, they're pushing the, the file to the CDN, and then they point to that file from their website, and then one or more of us goes to the site, we download it, but we're, actually, we're actually downloading a file from another machine that's more likely than not geographically close to where we happen to be. And that's the other part of using a CDN. That's what makes it really sexy. That's why you want to get high on Drupal's, because you can actually make your site feel really fast. It's not actually running any faster. Than it, than it would be if it was serving the file itself, but it feels faster to the people that are coming to your site because that file that they're downloading is going to be served from uh, one of the nodes or one of the servers on the, on the network, on the, on the network of the, the CDN that is geographically close to them, like in the same city or at least in the same state, or depending on where your visitor is coming from, the same country. So an example is uh, software. SoftLayer is our hosting sponsor, as well as the, uh, the, the web host that we use at Exaltation of Larks for a lot of things. And they call it CloudLayer CDN. Uh, I'm not sure why they use the word layer in every single thing that they do, but like their internet is like knowledge layer, and everything's got layer in it. So this is CloudLayer CDN. This is their cloud service package. And basically, they offer two different types. There are two different types of CDNs. There's origin pull, and then there's push. There are two types. And one is simple, and the other is advanced, or at least slightly more complicated. And that's the push CDN. So I'm going to show you how to, uh, how to do this using software. But this is going to be comparable. This is going to be similar to setting up a CDN, whether you use Cashfly or Max CDN or some other type of origin poll. Um, there are some really nice tips and tricks you can learn about how to use a push CDN and uh, things, for example, if you have a Drupal theme and you have all these files in your Drupal theme and you want to have them, um, for example, you have all these rounded corners that are images or you have a lot of CSS files and you want all these things to be on the CDN to take the load off your own site, you can use the, the push method. And I'll show you how to do that as well.
So, I'll log into the control panel at my web host. I'll try to log in. Okay. All right. So this is the software control panel, and where is it? <coughs> Content delivery network. So here is the here's the current setup. This uses a number of different things. It uses buttons and text fields and things like that. Really basic, but the complicated part is filling it in with the the correct information. The, the DNS information that you see here is a CNAME record so that everything that is on cdn.larks.la, which is actually a CNAME entry that points to software CDN, is, uh, is what my Drupal site is going to be referring to. So my Drupal site is going to say, you know what, my files, my CSS files, my videos or whatever it is that I have are not actually on www.larks.la, which points to my Drupal site. It will point to CDN. Larks.la. And that can be anything you want to call it, whether it's static or cache or assets or whatever other things you might see out there. So I just chose CDN. So everything that gets pulled from CDN.larks.la is actually going through the CDN. The CDN says, oh, this is actually, I already have a copy of this. And if it doesn't have a copy of it, it'll go get it. So I'll show you an exact example of what I'm talking about. So here is here's our website. So here we have a uh, a rather large image. We have a large background image as well. And this image is uh, I don't actually know how large it is, but it's large enough that I don't want to be serving it to every single person in the world from one point on the internet, from one server. I want to be serving it from the CDN so that the page loads relatively quickly or, or nearly instantly. So the way to do that is right here. I'm actually not using a relative path. This is just straight HTML that one of us wrote. So I'm not actually loading it from sites slash all, you know, my, my, where my theme lives. I'm loading it from the CDN. Now it's the identical it's an identical file. It's the same file, but it's being loaded from the CDN using some DNS magic. And once you learn how to set up a CDN entry, you'll say, you know, Chris Fano said that was magic, but you know, that was easy. So if anybody wants some help with this later on, I'm happy to I'm happy to help with that. Um, CNAME entries are very simple. It just says cdn.larks.la is actually this machine over here. It's just, it's like an alias. And that machine over here is the, is actually the host, or it's the, it's the web address of SoftLayer's CDN. And that is right here. Yes? That's not true. <laughs> uh, and you chose the CDN dot. Yes. Your yes, I did. So if I wanted it to be static, Dot you could right? totally do that. And I'll show you, uh, everyone's control panel is going to look different. Uh, in some cases, it won't even be you doing it. It'll be an intern or an assistant administrator or a developer you hire. But what, what it looks like here is, what it looks like here is, so let's see, manage DNS. Larks.la. So this is what a CNAME entry looks like. This is the host. So it it doesn't require that you type in the entire uh, fully qualified domain name. It's not cdn.larks.la. In this control panel, I just type in CDN. 
which will resolve to cdn.largest.la. And then this is the actual location, the actual uh, the host name for, uh, uh, it gets even more complicated. SoftLayer doesn't call it CloudLayer cloud layer CDN anymore, they call it cdnlayer.com. Yeah. So anyway, th th this is where it actually points to. So I'm going to do a, a comparison showing you a, a, speed, a speed comparison of uh, how fast it is to download that, that image I was just talking about from my server, which happens to be in Texas, versus the, the, the CDN. <coughs> and the CDN is going to decide on the fly which node on the network it's going to serve that image from based on my IP address and possibly some other stuff, other magic sprinkled in, I don't know. But that's the, the general philosophy. So here's the image. All right. I did. Thank you, Ron. All right. So that's that's going to come off the of CDN. CDN.larks.la. Now the identical file, bit for bit, is also on our Drupal site, which is accessible here. And I'll show you an example of that. So this is this is the CDN, and this is actually. I don't know if you noticed that, but it took a little longer to, to load that. Like, that's not a really ironclad example of, of, of the speed difference, but I, I, I just noticed that this took a little longer to load. And this is in a browser that I don't use. Every time I'm done using it, I empty the cache and reset all the cookies, so this, this was not actually cached. Nothing was cached. The only reason that this took longer is because it had more miles to travel from the server. So these are the two, the two files. If I were to do a, 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 a an MD5 or something and actually got a got a, a, a checksum of the file, these would be identical. What the CDN is doing when I'm at cdn.larks.la is it's just going to my Drupal site, fetching the file, saving it on the network, and then deletes it after 24 or 48 hours. And it only deletes it if it hasn't been requested <laughs> for that for that long uh, period of time. And that's origin pool. That's origin pool, right? So here I'm going to uh, sure. Oh, time. No, I'm not checking network latency. I'm actually going to see how long it takes for the file to be transferred. Oh, huh. that's what I'll do. All right, so this command's going to run in both both tabs. Let me turn off my outbound firewall just in case it's going to throw up a confirmation dialog. All right. Yeah, that was great. So what was the command? Time wget. <coughs> what was that? <coughs> oh no! It uh, the, what I'm doing is I'm using a terminal that lets you input the same text in both or all tabs. So um, yeah, I'm just going to go back to what I was going to do. It was a, it was a good it was good advice and I appreciate it. But let me try this. All right. Now this this is being recorded, but there's actually no camera on me. I, I'm doing a face palm right now. Uh, so something is. Uh, I could do that. So let me see what let me see if there's actually any output here. I, I'm not sure why my terminal is dying like this. That is a, it is a regular. It, it's a it's a it's a regular terminal. So so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna um, 
I'm going to log into a server. This is the LA Drupal server, and it's currently in Seattle. It's not here in Los Angeles. It's not in Texas. So it, it's uh, hopefully a good a good uh, metric. So we're going to do the same thing. All right. So this takes. 23 seconds. And that was from the CDN. And we'll do it again from well from the same the same server, but I'm I'm getting the file now from my Drupal site, which is in Texas. <laughs> now you type baseball. This always happens, doesn't it? Yeah, so uh, software, eat your heart out. Yeah, let's, let's go back up. Point one second. Oh. All right, so that, that that may have been a hiccup in, in you know, somewhere along the line. It has to cache it. It has to cache it. It wasn't on the Drupal site. It was on the Seattle mode or whatever. You're right. You're right. So it actually took longer uh, to those of you listening at home. Uh, or at work, and you should be working. The uh, what what Tommy just pointed out was that the first, what's that? Okay, what what Ron pointed out that Tommy repeated was that the first time that I that I requested this this file, it was actually going through the CDN, the the the, the whatever the Seattle node was on uh, software's network didn't have that file. Didn't have it, so it went to fetch the file. So let's say let's say it, it took 0.1 seconds to get it. Then it took 0.1 seconds to 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 get it from the server in in Dallas, and then it took another second to get it to me. Let's just divide into thirds like that. Sure. So so by the time that it was actually on the network, it was on the CDN. That's when it was much faster. <coughs> so yeah. All right. So the question is, how how do I use this in everyday practice? You're not going to be requesting things individually or clumsily in a terminal like I am. You're actually going to let your Drupal site take all, take care of all of this, so that all of your images that are being like when Drupal spits out the HTML that it gives to browsers, how how is it doing that? And the, and the point is, Drupal by itself doesn't do this. It doesn't know how. And what we're using here on our site is called the CDN module and that is in the in the notes here that's the the first link that I that I have listed this is a great module I've been using it since the early 1.0 days there is now a version 2 that's in beta a new version just came out recently and I highly recommend it uh, everything that I've shown you up, up to this point has been a little bit clumsy and just you know flying by the seat of my pants but all you gotta do is install this module and it has great documentation that lets you do origin pull or push. So if you use something <laughs> that's more exotic like CloudFront, which isn't really that exotic, but it's different from, from the uh, uh, bare bones, really simple CDN. Uh, CloudFront is running on top of Amazon's S3 service and the nice thing that they do that I like a lot is that you can serve things over HTTPS as well as HTTP, and that's something that, uh, in this case, uh, soft layer CDN does not support. So if you're running in SSL only mode and you want to serve things over SSL, you just can't do that with some CDNs, but you can with CloudFront. And CloudFront is really cheap. And if you already have a lot of your stuff in S3, you just click a button in your control panel and all of a sudden it's, it's available to CloudFront. It's really nice. Would it be safe to assume though that CDN layer, soft layer, would be adding HTTPS at some future point. I think it's safe to say. I'm not privy to to their roadmap for this yeah. for this product, but uh, Amazon has been in the game for a number of years, and more or less everyone is is playing catch up. More or less, um, I I like SoftLayer and I like CDN Layer a lot because of the price, and because I know them and I don't have any problems with them so far. So. But yeah, it, it's safe to say that they will be rolling out new products in the future. I just don't know what they're going to be doing. Yes? Jeff? Yeah. 
Exactly. So you you are not actually paying for storage in a lot of cases. It depends on, on the terms and conditions and plans and pricing of, of the CDN that you choose. Uh, in the case of CloudFront, you are paying for storage because those files are, are already already being saved in S3. I think that's I think that's correct. Uh, but in this case, what SoftLayer does, or what Max CDN does, or what Simple CDN does, they just delete the files. They just delete them after a period of time, and then you're not charged for for how long they live on the server. You're being charged for bandwidth. Yes, more or less. So, from the user's point of view, as you were, as you were asking, from from the from your visitor's perspective, they are going to your site, and when they request a page, because that's what that's the paradigm we live in right now. It's not files or you know whatever. It's pages with little pictures. What they're doing, just like when you go to Twitter.com. Hopefully, you didn't go there today or or do the on mouse over thing and yeah. So. Uh, if you go to Twitter.com and you look at the list of user pictures that are that are on the on the on the site, so how about I do this? So what's happening right now is the HTML loads first, and then the image is loaded. And these images don't actually live on Twitter.com. These images live on the CDN. So from the user's point of view, from from my point of view right now, this looks like it's on Twitter.com. But if I do the source, or take take a look here, this is actually on. This is probably a C name to, to. Um, I have actually no idea what their, what their CDN is. They used to use S3 back in the day. And yeah, that probably means asset node zero. Yeah. I don't know what it means. So anyway, <laughs> from from the user's point of view. It's, I'm loading a page, my page is coming up quickly. But from the developer's point of view, or from the seamer's point of view, the files are living in multiple places at the same time. But there's always one master. There's always, that's, that's a good question. There's, always, there's a one master, and the master lives on your site. Yeah. Yes, Frank. Uh, is there any extra stuff to get this working with? Uh, No. No, I don't think so. Sid. Does the CDN module, I guess the question I have is, does the CDN module handle putting in the domain so that you don't have to worry about putting in the CDN domain every time you put it Let's take a look. What was that last thing you said? And if you needed to change the scene, you could change it in one place and not have to go everywhere. And That's a good point. So in the CDN module's advanced mode, where is it? So here under advanced, if you are pushing your files to wherever your CDN happens to be, it doesn't matter whether you have um, you know, I just forgot exactly what I was going to say. That was awesome. Do you want me to ask a question? Yes, would you please? <laughs> so, the question I have is, one way of doing this would be, I could put an image into my HTML, and I could actually, in the source, put in the CDN subdomain. Yes. So that it would know. But yes. obviously it would be preferable if I didn't have to do that, if I just had some way that some, say the CDN module knew, oh, that's an image, since it's an image source, I should give it not the site's normal subdomain, but the special subdomain, which goes over the CDN. Okay, so normally, you don't want to use absolute URLs. Right. This here is for the sake of this demo. Yeah. This is not a bad practice, but it's not the most maintainable. Mm -hmm. And this is an example of, yes, if I change my CNAME entry, which typically you don't want to do. If you ever set it up, you just you want to leave it. Mm -hmm. If I changed it, or I don't know, something bad happened and it didn't work, then you would need to go and update this. Absolutely, you would need to. But the trick is to use a CDN module because it's smart. The CDN module has a couple patches in it that you can 
or that you would have to apply against Drupal Core. And if you don't apply the patches that come with the CDN module, then it just doesn't work. You can turn the module on and it thinks it's doing stuff, but it actually isn't. And this is another reason to use Pressflow. Pressflow is an alternative distribution of Drupal. It has a lot of nice things that are backported from Drupal 7. And it also has the patches from the CDN module already applied, so you don't have to apply it. It's really cool. The only time that you'll actually want to patch anything is if you use image cache, which I think most of us are using. And if you are using image cache, then you'll need to apply the patch to the image cache module so that it supports the CDN as well. And this is one of the major differences between the, the version 1 of a CDN module versus version 2. Version 2 has support for image cache and a whole bunch of things that are just too long to, to mention. So, uh, does that answer your question, Sid? You want to use relative URLs, you don't want to change your CNAME, and if you... It also depends on things like uh, whether these images are being served from your from your um, your style sheets or your TPLs, you know, your theme files. Ideally, you'll have them in your style sheets so that when it loads a, a relative path, the CDN will pull those onto the network as well. So those are, those are the basic things to keep in mind. Um, that's about it. My demo was really fun. Thank you very much, all of you. Yes, Chris. Uh, I just wanted to point out, uh, I mean, the number is 0.3 seconds to 0.01. I mean, it's a factor of 30. So the CDN was 30 times faster delivering that image than what your server did. The, the CDN was much faster the second time. So what I forgot to do was to actually do a dry run in advance to make sure. I just assumed that someone in Seattle was looking at my site. Yeah. <laughs> and that the CDN had already... You know, whatever, whatever node on the CDN in, in Washington State had already cached that file. So and a rule of thumb is before you show your boss or client how fast it's going, visit it yourself, obviously. Yes. And then... You yes. Run, uh, yes. And, and for all those budding presenters out there, Chris's advice is really good. I should, I should have done this, you know, in private with you beforehand. I think actually it worked out better you doing it the way you did. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Questions? I show. I have a question, but the other thing you can also always point out to a potential client is that because you have a CDN serving all of these data files, your primary server that would be processing all of these, be all of that stuff, is freed up with more resources to be able to serve it to more people at the same time. So as an example, I had put it on one site, and I was able to increase the number of people that came to the site by 30%. So it went from around 150 to 200 users. So it, it was a big difference. Sid. And part of that, I'm actually the same way, but for me, very well, very part of it is that the browser has a certain number of files that are downloaded at a time per a domain. Correct. Yeah. And so if you have a CDN with a different domain, it will start downloading those. At the same time, as so even if it took exactly the same time to download the image files, it would still be faster. It would be in parallel. It would be doing more downloading at that per second. Yeah. And Weisslow wants you to serve. Like if you guys use the Weisslow or you follow any of those books, they're telling you post it on a subdomain, uh, and that's normally an alias. But if you can have it really point to a C name, obviously for Spano show, you know the factor of thirty just you know for one image. Multiply that across everything on your page. Start moving. A couple more. Yep. Benno? You said earlier there was a push and a pull CDN. Yes. What's the difference between? So the, the, the major difference is if you're taking in user generated content like photos and you want to burn your own watermark into those photos, you would probably need to use a push CDN uh, for the reason that you can pre-process that file and then push it to where it's going to live in some for, uh, for some duration of time. Um, the Media Mover suite of modules is a really good example of it takes in stuff that you um, media that you want to you, you want to transform it from one format to another. You want to re-encode it. You want to 
change the dimensions or resolution. When you're done with it, you want to move it from your private files directory or your temp directory to your CDN. And the way to do that is with the, C with the CDN modules daemon. And you can also write scripts for that as well. It's, uh, where, where am I? Here. So here is also a much better example, or a much better description than what I just gave. But if you, if you need to run some type of transformation or, um, yeah, that's about it. That's about it. Isn't it that you're responsible when it's a push to get it out yes. to the edge servers when Google, yes. the servers will grab it themselves? So that's why he's saying you need another kind of, and, and transporters like when I guess we're used to it going out. Something that can push it out, yeah. Right. Right. You will have to push it if it's origin push. But that's the service you chose. Yeah. So there is a daemon that does that kind of pushing. That's include a daemon is a as a computer agent. It's a software program that that runs on your server. And that daemon, I think this daemon is written in Python, and it's already included in the CDN module. If if you were to use a a push CDN. No, I have not. Has anyone used Falcon Bear? No. Miguel. I was just going to say that, uh, talking about what I showed it, CDNs are really important for like a lot of large corporations for like mission critical stuff. Because, for example, like Ticketmaster, they use, they've been using Akamai as their, um, as their CDN for like 10 years. Because, and because of what I showed said, right? So like, they're not spending computer uh, resources on serving up images where you have a large on sale, like on a Saturday morning at 10, they can have more people actually logging on to the site instead of having spending those resources on images. Yep. Uh, so you, uh, yeah. so, uh, you never seen anything that you can do. But they're happy to be the bad guys. They're happy to be the So I had a question for the crowd, <laughs> and I'm just going to say, Ashok, I have a question for you. <laughs> uh, have you uh, heard of anyone combining something like a static file cache like Boost with a CDN so that a website is more or less delivered exclusively by CDN and not the original server? I'm not sure. Not I haven't really seen that, but I imagine if you are able to. <laughs> Okay, so what people can typically do is instead of getting your <laughs> somebody yeah. somebody dialed it right. A show everyone. Yes. All right. What I what I recall doing at my uh, previous workplace is you would point your website at the CDN first, and from there it would see is the content that it's supposed to serve expired or not. If it has already expired, then it hits your server for that piece of content. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're serving something through Boost, I can imagine you could set an expiry date on that HTML file or whatever that it generates, so that then the next time when someone requests it from the CDN, it sees, oh, this hasn't expired yet. Let me just serve <coughs> this piece of content directly, as opposed to requesting it from the server. And that also helps you with the site. Yep. So yeah, it's possible. I, I think it is possible. I just don't know of anyone who's actually done it. Yeah? Interesting. All right. Yeah, definitely join the performance group all if right. any of this interests you at all. Uh, that's literally where everyone's talking CDNs, caching, you know, proxy this, proxy that. So it's the, the group to be on, groups at group.org, and you can just find your performance. Yeah, scale definitely. Ashok, last question. Not a question. Again, last last uh, no, word, word of wisdom. Least based on what you were talking about regarding push, it almost sounds like in some ways it could be faster than a full method because you're already loading that yeah. asset onto their server in the first place as opposed to a pull where it checks if that content exists. So, so yeah, that's, that's all I have to say. So that first... No matter who's loading it from wherever, since it's already on their network, mm -hmm. 
it should be the same speed and just as fast each time around. Yeah. You know, we're using trash closet to push, um, but there's we use our sync to get that out there. But there is there's still a del propagation delay within their network. So yeah. even if you get it onto a CDN, if someone's requesting it in Tokyo, it'd still take a while to get it to that NFC. There's still some propagation. There. You know, when I asked who here is using a CDN, you didn't raise your hand. I'm not doing it with Drupal. So That's I okay. Didn't wanna, That's all right. But it, and it's 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 not it's a different approach. So. Yeah, yeah. That, that's and that and you brought up another good point is that you you're using rsync to to put your files on we do it on where your CDN is. Process. So as we deploy to our servers, we're also deploying to our CDNs, and that's yeah. using Maven and a different sort of. And capacity. these are this is your own homegrown CDN. You're not using an external provider for this. Uh, no, it's using Cashfly. That's using Cashfly, which is a really okay. cheap, cheap provider. So All right. They they rate pretty well as well. I don't know if that's what they're writing a good blog. Paul, last question. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have a last question? Yeah, I have no last question. question. I want to know okay. what Paul's looking forward to. Yeah. Great. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's also kind of desirable. Right. Yeah, so like movies could come on the third, graphics could be from the first, et cetera. And that brings up a really good point. And I'm over my time, but there's actually a module called Parallel, which you can use instead of the CDN module. And this does exactly what you're talking about, where it will actually rewrite the URLs that Drupal spits out so that all the URLs have different host names and different subdomains, but they, they actually all theoretically can all go back to one site, but the browser is able to make multiple requests to the same to the same web server. The only downside to this module is it will only do that when it's a file type or like You can have them all be the same one. Or unless you're talking about say make this GS file for this particular domain and make this other GS file which is Oh, is it by default that it's trying to make a new subdomain? So it sounds like there's a setting then that we should be able to group JS and CSS on yes. one. I use the parallel manager. Okay. So. But JS is also naturally serial, right? So you get a much gain by separating it? When you say by serial, what do you mean? Hey, everybody? Everybody, I need to, to jump in, and uh, our, our time keeper has reminded me that it is now 9 o'clock. We need to be out at 9.30, so let's, let's table this for one of the Birds of the Feather sessions. Does that sound good? Great. Thank you again for, for listening and asking questions. And so the key takeaway is Pressflow CDN module. Flipping awesome. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Thanks a lot. Who do we have next?